What's up everybody? Welcome back to my office, which is currently a bit under construction, so that's why I'm doing a bit of a man on the scene deal in my own house. A bit strange, but we've got a lot of strange things to talk about. And some things not so strange. If you watch some of my videos, you've probably seen them coming. We're gonna be talking about Formula One. Very open wheel heavy video, because the Formula One silly season is very much in swing. And a lot of the things that are happening in Formula One could have IndyCar influences. Speaking of IndyCar, some great driver signings for the end of this season and potentially could be giving us a preview to 2022. So without any further ado, let's get into it. All right, so obviously one of the things that everybody was talking about yesterday was the fact that Kimi Raikkonen, uh, current driver for Alfa Romeo Sauber in the Formula One series and the 2007 World Driving Champion, announced his retirement from Formula One yesterday. Now, that, of course, means that there are tremendous wide-reaching implications for the Formula One silly season because that is, uh, while not a primo spot on the grid, certainly is a spot on the grid that a lot of people are going to be vying for, particularly some drivers we've talked about before on this channel, drivers like Mick Schumacher, drivers like Alexander Albon. Um, but there have been some interesting things along that line. Um, now, Alexander Albon is probably the most pressing one in terms of what we talk about on this channel. In fact, he's held this mic at one point, and I've asked him questions about um, his driving future. And at the time, if you guys hadn't seen that interview, he was adamant that he wanted to return to Formula One, despite the fact that he was in Indianapolis in the IndyCar paddock and meeting with virtually every team owner in the paddock. Um, covering all the bases was Alexander Albon. So... Current rumors have suggested that he could be linked to two Formula One teams for next year. Those would be Alfa Romeo and Williams. Um, the strongest rumors seem to point to Williams, or at least pointed to Williams. As of right now, we've heard that Nick DeVries could be moved into the Williams spot with George Russell moving to Mercedes and potentially Valtteri Bottas moving to Alfa Romeo, replacing Raikkonen. So... If Albon can't find a seat at Alfa Romeo and he can't find a seat at Williams, then it would stand to reason that what I reported um, in the Silly Season video I made at Gateway, I think is much more likely. I, I personally don't believe we will see Alex Albon in Formula One next year. Um, I think for whatever reason, uh, the folks in Formula One, and again, I don't have like an inside source in the Formula One paddock, I just kind of look at it from the outside and hear what people say about Alexander Albon, and I go, I think a lot of people look at him as damaged goods. And quite honestly, I think he would have, he would benefit a lot more from a fresh start in IndyCar. It's still an open wheel series. I, again, looking back to my interview I did with him, I asked him about DTM, and he didn't seem too excited or enthusiastic about it. He was much more enthusiastic to talk about IndyCar and to talk about his Formula One career. So I think that's where he wants to be. And I think a fresh start for him and what would be best for his career would be IndyCar. And there's nothing saying that a driver can't go from Formula One to IndyCar back to Formula One. Some drivers have tried it. There haven't been a whole lot of success stories. I know Nigel Mansell did it, um, but he was a defending world champion. He came in, won the, the world championship, won the IndyCar championship, uh, left Form IndyCar for Formula One at the end of the 94 season and won some more races, but ultimately his career ended uh, early in 1995 when he couldn't fit in the McLaren. But um, And Alex Zanardi is the other great example of that, a driver who struggled in Formula One, went to IndyCar racing, dominated, found his true niche, found out what he uh, was best at driving, and then decided to go back to Formula One, went to a Williams team that wasn't exactly in its prime anymore, and uh, ultimately uh, went back to IndyCar racing. So, yeah, I, I think Albon, I believe we'll see him here. Ultimately, I think we'll see him here. Um, and again, I think that, that the Dale Coyne team, uh, particularly the Rick Ware side of things, will be where we end up seeing him. Um, I mean, again, I, I observed with my own two eyes Roman Grosjean being very active in facilitating getting Alex Albon acquainted with that team, all its owners, the drivers. Uh, I would say that, that Roman uh, handpicked his replacement there. That is my observation. We'll see if it works out, but... Um, yeah, I, I think Albon will be in IndyCar next year, not Formula One, 
But of course, this could also age terribly. So look out for that Twitter post someday. Okay, let's talk IndyCar racing. And the major story uh, is that Oliver Askew is back in the series, at least for the last three races of the season. And certainly I think uh, he will be, or we will be seeing him uh, a lot more in the coming days and years to come. Why is that? Well, he has signed with the Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan team for the last three races of 2021. And as I reported in my Silly Season video, it would seem that uh, Hy-Vee wants an American driver for whatever reason. Santino Ferrucci does not seem to be the team's first choice. And Oliver Askew, I believe, will drive this car uh, in the full 2022 season. Again, we, haven't, we don't know that for sure yet, but um, I would say unless he just completely uh, qualifies last every race, runs last every race, crashes out, uh, I think you'll see him at Ray Hall in 2022. But um, I think it's a great opportunity. I think you guys um, are well aware, uh, if you've been following this channel for the past year, of Oliver Askew's uh, trials and tribulations. Um, but he's handled those in such a classy way and didn't burn any bridges in the process, which was, I think, really impressive. I know it's better than, than, than my temperament for sure. Um, he, I mean, he even got an opportunity to drive a McLaren car uh, this year, uh, replacing uh, Felix Rosenquist at Detroit. He got to play super sub role at, um, at Ed Carpenter Racing, uh, got a top 10 there um, when Renus VK got hurt. And I think it's a well-deserved opportunity. I think he's a Obviously, he's an Indy Lights champion. Uh, he showed some great pace last year. Um, unfortunately, again, the concussion issues kind of hampered his development. But I think if you look at the Ray Hall team and you consider that the, the three drivers there, potentially in 22, are going to be Graham Ray Hall, Jack Harvey, and Oliver Askew, I think you have three solid drivers who are going to put in good performances. But also, I think you got three chargers there. I think they're going to play off of each other's strengths. I think you've got a very strong team there. Uh, with the three-driver uh, knockout punch. So um, it's very exciting from that perspective. Uh, those of you who are about to complain about the next story I have um, with a lack of, Amer lack of American drivers in the series, here's an American sponsor and an American team putting an American driver in their car. So uh, an American champion driver in their car. So um, when we complain about Kyle Mylott and Formula 2 drivers and Formula 1 drivers like Alexander Albon, you know, we, we, it's not like we don't have the American champions coming over and racing with them as well. Speaking of Callum Eilat, <laughs> Hunkos Hollinger Racing. Now, I did not get to do a full video uh, talking about uh, this announcement, but Hunkos Hollinger Racing will run the last three races of this season, much like the Ray Hall team is doing with Oliver Askew, and they will run the full 2022 IndyCar season. I think that is a fantastic um, story. Obviously, Hunkos is, is no stranger to getting uh, headlines, as we know from Indianapolis 2019, where Kyle Kaiser driving for the team at the time knocked Fernando Alonso out of the Indianapolis 500. And I think for Hunkos Hollinger, the fact that this new team, or not new team, but this team uh, has it kind of exemplifies the new attitude, I think, that Roger Penske is bringing into his ownership role of the series rather than his ownership role of the most powerful team. And that is that when we look back to 2019 and we talk about, or I talked about quite a bit, I covered this story ad nauseum. I was one of the biggest, loudest mouths behind um, kind of opposing Roger Penske on this. Was Roger Penske opposed Bump Day for the very specific reason of, well, I have a big team and I run the full series, so why should I get bumped? And the, the sort of teams that he was kind of, in a way, working against were teams like Hunkos and teams like Top Gun and teams like, you know, uh, Dragon Speed. But over the last few years, uh, particularly the ones that Roger Penske has owned the series, we've not only seen him kind of uh, retract those uh, statements on Bump Day, but we've seen through his actions that he's willing to help out some teams uh, that are not necessarily at the front of the grid right now. Um, I mean, if you look at Top Gun, I don't think they have a tremendous amount of help from Penske Entertainment, but at the same time, they have a Chevy engine. Who owns Ilmore Engineering, who makes the Chevy engines? Roger Penske. He doesn't have to make <laughs> engines available to that team if he doesn't want to. Same thing with Hunkos Racing, and it goes a step further. Um, I was the first one to report on this, that the Pareto Autosport car that was run 
uh, out of the Penske shop this year was essentially just taking the Hunkos racing car and all of its equipment and moving it over there. Roger leased all that stuff from Hunkos. That's an income, <laughs> a big income generator for Ricardo. Penske also employed Hunkos to build all of the autonomous race cars that will be participating in the Indy Autonomous Challenge. So Roger has found a way to get Hunkos Racing a lot of work this year. And now that they have a partner in the Hollinger side of things, they have found the budget to go racing full-time next year. They were testing at the Speedway yesterday. They brought in Formula 2 driver and Ferrari development driver Callum Eilat to test the car. Um, Callum will drive the car at least at Portland. Um, I don't know. I've heard a few different things. They, I heard, heard that Eilat could run the rest of the season for Hunkos, but I've also heard that they may try out different drivers um, in each of the races going forward. So we'll have to see how that goes. Um, not too much to report on with Eilat because we really don't have a, a comparison because of the fact that he was running the F1 version of the Indianapolis road course. And yes, you heard that right, despite the fact that they did not run the flat out, uh, well, we used to call it turn 13. I'm sure it's not turn 13 anymore because they've re reconfigured some of the Indianapolis road course, but they did not run the turn one oval in reverse, put it that way. Um, and that is raised to my brows. And I'm going to address this. Um, I'm not reporting anything because I don't think there's anything to report right now, but there's been a lot of rumor that um, the last couple of races of the season that are all taking place on the West Coast um, could have uh, some trouble. Now, there was a racer article um, posted, I think, a week and a half ago or so, um, where Jay Fry of IndyCar, you know, kind of vehemently opposed uh, the idea that any race is in jeopardy for the rest of the season. But the idea is that potentially, uh, if there were a problem um, with Long Beach or Portland or Laguna Seca, IndyCar could come to the IMS road course and run another race. And because of the fact that Hunkos was running on a different layout of the road course, uh, the speculation is that, oh, well, maybe there's a backup plan. So um, as of right now, I, you know, everybody who I've asked about it has told me, not totally, not, not across the board, but I think most people have told me that, that, that most of the, uh, the West Coast races are pretty much going to happen. Um, the one thing that I do worry about is if there's a capacity restriction at Long Beach, because Long Beach has long since uh, maintained that they need 100% capacity to make their race work. Now, whether that, and they, and they already do have a vaccine requirement or whatever to go to that race. So the question is, um, if they have a if they have a capacity restriction in in addition to any kind of like other COVID restrictions, the question would be, at what point does Roger Penske and Penske Entertainment have to subsidize that event, and then at what point is that subsidy uh, going to be more expensive than just bringing most of the teams who are based in Indianapolis to the Indianapolis Road Course and finishing the season, than rather sending them all out to Long Beach to finish the season there um, where you're going to be spending more money just to put on that race. I don't know. That's a, that's a conundrum that could potentially play out. I hope it doesn't, but that's, that's the threat I would see for an event such as Long Beach. Um, I think capacity restrictions would be much less worrisome at a place like uh, Laguna or even Portland, though I know that Portland um, uh, is a lot more restrictive than most of the rest of this country at this point. But again, we're a week away, and I know we said that a lot last year where we thought things were going to happen and then they didn't or didn't happen the way we thought they would. Um, but, you know, as a, a friend of mine said, it's not 2020 anymore. So I, I feel like we're probably not going to quite see 2020-style um, uh, shutdowns of races, um, even on the West Coast. So fingers crossed on that. That's what I've heard. Um, still still unclear as to why Hunkos ran that uh, – Ran that extra layout, though. I guess we'll find out. Maybe they were testing um, to run the, the, the fall, I guess the late summer uh, race on that course next year, because I hope they will. Uh, that needs a change. We shouldn't run the same track like five times a year. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Dave Land on YouTube. Subscribe for more motorsport content, and I will see you in the next video.